Hey guys, what's going on? Megan here. So check out the drop in myostatin from the four different groups, right? You have the resistance training group, so that they were just lifting weights. And here's the reduction in the myostatin levels. You have the resistance training plus epicatechin group. And as you can see, they have the biggest drop in myostatin. Keep in mind, this is chocolate. I'm using chocolate to represent epicatechin, right? So this is not doo-doo. This is chocolate. You have the group that only took epicatechin. And as you can see, they have a very, very, very small drop in myostatin. And then obviously, you have the placebo group, right? The group that didn't do anything. And as you can clearly see, the myostatin levels stayed high as expected. And it gets even better when you look at the phylostatin levels. Once again, here's the resistance training group. Huge spike in phylostatin, which is obviously the number one myostatin blocker. You have the resistance training plus epicatechin group, which gave the biggest spike in phylostatin. And you have, this is the impressive part, the group that only took epigatogen and didn't do a single thing still got a significant increase in phylostatin. And obviously the placebo group didn't really change much. Another study was also done this time on rats and they got the exact same results. As you can tell here, the young rats and the old rats, there goes the myostatin levels. As you can see, the control group had high levels of myostatin, but the group that took epigatogen had significantly lower myostatin levels. Same thing with the old group, right? High myostatin levels at baseline reduced significantly once they took epigatogen. And just like in a human study, we also have the same effect on phylostatin. The control group is on the left side and on the right side, as you can see, a bigger spike in phylostatin from taking epigatogen. Same thing with the old group, huge spike in phylostatin. In the third experiment, they looked at the effects of epicatechin for just seven days. So pretty much seven days of supplementing with epicatechin. And as you can see at baseline, the young group had significantly lower myostatin levels than the old group. And that's expected, right? That's the reason why old people have a hard time putting on muscle compared to young people. Young people simply have less myostatin and more phylostatin. So even at baseline, you can clearly see the reason why we tend to lose muscle as we age. Our myostatin levels go through the roof. The same is also true for our phylostatin levels. As you can see, the young group had higher levels of phylostatin, while the old group had lower levels. And after they supplemented with epicatechin for seven days, they had a 7% increase in hand grip strength, and they also had a huge increase in their phylostatin to myostatin levels. So as you can clearly see, guys, epicatechin has anabolic effects. Anyway, this is another episode of Myostatin Monday, where we talk about everything related to myostatin. For those who are new, myostatin is a protein your body makes that limits how much muscle you can put on, which is why animals or humans who are missing the myostatin gene or have a mutation in the myostatin gene look like absolute monsters. So for anyone who's interested in building muscle, myostatin should be number one on your list on things to optimize. And if you watch my other videos on myostatin, you're already familiar with the different examples on what scientists have done in the lab. For example, this mouse here is lacking the myostatin gene and is genetically engineered to overproduce phylostatin. So you can clearly see the difference in size, four times the amount of muscle mass. There's another example here. Look at the leg difference. Normal mouse, brolic mouse. Another difference here, side by side. Not only they have a lot more muscle, but they also have significantly less body fat than the regular mice. Here's an example of a monkey that was injected with phylostatin. In just a few weeks, look at the difference in his quad. And of course, here's a 10 year old kid that was lucky enough to be missing both his myostatin genes. As you can clearly see, at 10 years old, he has six pack abs, traps of peace, wrong boys, calves, you name it. And as I mentioned several times, myostatin is also the reason why IRBB bodybuilders have this cartoonish physique, right? One of the effects of anabolic steroids is to upregulate the phylostatin pathway and downregulate the myostatin pathway. That's also why every unnatural myostatin inhibitor is currently banned by the World Anti-Doping Agency, especially since athletes have recently been looking into gene doping. Now, as a natural, should you worry about your myostatin levels? Absolutely. The most important gene for hypertrophy is obviously Acurin 1, which has the highest correlation we've ever seen on record. Pretty much, you cannot build significant muscle without this gene. And sure enough, it is cock blocked by myostatin. Other studies and other men have shown that after training, those who reduce myostatin the most are the ones who put on the most size. Myostatin is also the reason why old women have a very hard time putting on muscle. For those of you guys who don't know, 
old women are the most anabolic resistant people on the planet as you can see here after training old men have a decent reduction in myostatin which allows them to put on muscle young men have the biggest drop in myostatin which once again explains why it is so easy for young men to put on muscle young women have a decent drop in myostatin and obviously as you can see here old women have a very hard time dropping myostatin even after they lift weights which is why they have anabolic resistance now number one way to drop myostatin is obviously through training literally just getting your ass in the gym and lifting weights is going to give you the biggest drop in myostatin the only drawback is that the biggest drop you get in myostatin from training is at the eight hour mark after that myostatin starts to slowly go back towards baseline which is once again why it is so important to train with high frequency if you're natural the second way to significantly drop myostatin is through creatine. I already made a video about that. Make sure you check it out. Here you can see the group on the left that just trained without creatine drop myostatin by a small amount, whereas the group that trained with creatine had a huge drop in myostatin, which obviously leads to more gains. Now, back to epicathogen. Does it work? Absolutely. Based on the few studies we have, we clearly see a huge effect of epicathogen on phallostatin and myostatin levels now keep in mind that's not the only benefits of epicathogen it's been shown to increase nitric oxide production so that's obviously going to help you get a big pump in the gym it's been shown to increase energy levels mainly through mitochondrial genesis it helps with recovery mainly through its antioxidant properties and it's also been shown to regulate blood sugar right so if you have high blood sugar type 2 diabetes or blood pressure issues this is right in your alley. And there are over 600 studies on epicathogen. So it's not some new mystery molecule. It's been out for a very long time. And I mentioned it on this channel several times. Now, where is it found? It's found mainly in chocolate, specifically dark chocolate. But obviously the amount of dark chocolate you have to eat to get enough epicathogen is not practical, right? You're going to get fat as fuck and come back and say, hey, Megan told me to eat chocolate and I'm a fat piece of shit. No, don't get it from chocolate get it from pure cocoa powder right unsweetened minimally processed cocoa powder right that's where you're going to get the biggest bang for your buck in fact it has the highest epicathogen content out of all the plants out there remember guys this is a flavonoid so it's found in many 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 plants but once again cocoa powder has the highest amount by far so as always i don't recommend you buy this shit from supplement companies you guys already know how i feel about most supplement companies right I'm not a big fan of recommending supplements to you guys, especially if you can get it from foods, right? Nature is your best friend. If I can't get a supplement from foods, I don't even waste my time, with very few exceptions. So once again, do not buy epicathogen supplements. Either don't get it at all or get it from foods, right? Not to mention that they're overpriced as shit, right? They're not worth the price. Trust me, there's no point in dropping that much money when the most you're going to get out of it is a slight increase in strength, a slight increase in muscle mass, and all the other benefits I mentioned a few minutes ago. Now, as far as how much do you need, how much epicathogen do you need, most studies use the standard one milligram per kilogram of body weight. So if you weigh 80 kilograms, you could start with 80 milligrams, probably double that. Now, as far as getting it from chocolate, once again, forget it, right? You're gonna have to eat so much chocolate that it defeats the purpose because you're just gonna get fat as shit, way too many calories. Now, if you're attempting to get it from cocoa powder, there's about 160 milligrams for every 100 grams of cocoa powder. As long as it's not alkalized, right, it has to be as unprocessed as possible. I repeat, make sure it's not sweetened, make sure it's not alkalized, make sure it's pure, unsweetened cocoa powder, as close to its natural state as possible. That's what's going to have the highest amount of epicathogen. If it's alkalized, it's going to have a lot less. So you're looking at 160 milligrams of epicathogen uh, per 100 grams of pure non-alkalized cocoa powder so if you weigh 80 kilograms you only need 80 milligrams right so that means you only need about half of that so, which is about 50 grams of cocoa powder which is still a lot right so what i used to do years ago when i was bodybuilding you guys know i stopped bodybuilding years ago now i don't even give a shit i just lift weights recreationally but back when i was bodybuilding i was using about one to two ounces a day right so that comes out to 28 to 56 grams of cocoa powder and i was just putting that shit in my protein shake or in whatever else i could put it in pancakes you name it so that's how i was getting my epicathogen back in the days and obviously i was doing the usual canola and spinach blah 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 right so again as naturals 
Anything that gives us even 5% better performance in the gym or 5% more strength on our lifts is well worth the effort in my opinion. So conclusion, Epic Atogen works. Um, it's kind of a hassle to get from food since you can only get it from cocoa powder. It has a ton of benefits and I mainly recommend it if you're trying to break through a plateau or if you're trying to get that extra push or extra increase in performance. It's cheap, it's natural, stay away from supplements. And um, if WADA decides to ban epicathogen, you don't have to worry because once again, you'll be getting it from chocolate anyway. And that's about it. I'm definitely looking forward to a lot more studies on this. We need at least two to three more studies on trained men so we can see the full potential of this molecule because it does a whole bunch of things. Every year, there's like a new a uh, new found use for epicathogen. But anyway, guys, hope this video helps. See you guys in the comment section. All right, guys, don't forget to like or share the video, subscribe and hit the bell, and buy my HSP Nucleus of a Low Training Program. It's the ultimate program for maximum muscle growth. It includes full body workout splits, bro splits, push pull, home workouts, you name it. Also comes with a complete guide for macros, nutrition, fat loss, muscle growth, hormones, including a meal plan. It's pretty much all my 16 years of experience condensed into one fucking book. You're also going to get free copies of any future edition. So visit team3dalpha.com and you can use the 40% off coupon code Nucleus of Lord. Or you could just buy the shit at full price. Alright guys, I'm out of here.